Hello, I am Pastor Ernest Eldis with Agape Holistic Life Changing Ministries. As always, I am humbled and honored to share with you what thus says the word of the Lord. Let us pray. Gracious Father, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you for your goodness, your kindness, your mercy, your grace. Lord God, we thank you for meeting us here even at this time. We are praying, Lord God, that you bless this message, bless the hearers, that they will receive it, and, it, and that it will be a blessing to them and to those whom they tell about it. Father God, we are praying for this nation, all of our government officials, all of our public servants, and Lord God, we are indeed praying for the household of faith. Now, Father, bless this message. Let me receive this. We pray and we thank you. In Christ Jesus' name, amen and amen. I thank God for all of our church members throughout the United States and hopefully as we grow throughout the world. Our friends and listening audience at large, I thank God for you and your continued support and your prayers. We ask you to feel free to subscribe to us uh, on uh, YouTube and also we're asking you to please like us on Facebook. And if you would, feel free to share these messages that you hear with at least three to five of your friends and ask them to share it because we definitely want the word of God to get out. Today we want to talk from a thought, living a changed life living a changed life. As always, we want you to keep in mind that Jesus Christ is coming. We don't want to get so carried away and concerned about the day-to-day -day affairs that we forget that Jesus Christ is coming. And he may come while you are asleep. He may come early in the morning at midnight, he may come at 3 p.m., we never can tell. You may be in the grocery store shopping, and Jesus Christ will come. So we don't want you to uh, lose focus and not be prepared for the soon coming king. As it was in the days of Noah, people were carrying on. They were boozing it up partying back, having fun, and then the flood came. But we want to be on our lookout for the soon coming king. We want you to read with us as we read our scripture lesson text. It will be coming from the book of Romans, chapter 6, verses 1 through 13. And then we will skip down to verse 22 and 23. We will be reading from the NIV version. <clears throat> so if you will, get your Bibles and let us read what thus says the word of the Lord. Listen as we read. Read on this wise. What shall we say then? Shall we go on sinning so that grace may increase? By no means. We are those who have died to sin. How can we live in it any longer? Or don't you know that all of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. For if we have been united with him 
any debt like his, we will certainly also be united with him in a resurrection like his. For we know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body ruled by sin might be done away with. That we should no longer be slaves or servants to sin. Because anyone who has died has been set free from sin. Now, if we died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. For we know that since Christ was raised from the dead, he cannot die again. Death no longer has mastery over him. The death he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. In the same way, count yourselves dead to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus. Therefore, do not let sin reign in your mortal body so that you obey its evil desires. Do not offer any part of yourself to sin as an instrument of wickedness, but rather offer yourselves to God as those who have been brought from death to life and offer every part of yourself to him as an instrument of righteousness. Move on down with me to verse 22 and 23. It reads on this wise. But now that you have been set free from sin and have become slaves or servants of God, the benefit you reap leads to holiness, and the result is eternal life. Thank you, Jesus. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Now, I often say this, and I still believe it, and I still mean it. It is my desire to provoke thought and to move you to appropriate action. Now, I want to focus on a particular verse, the 22nd verse, and it reads on this wise. But now that you have been set free from sin, and have become servants of God, the benefit, keep that in mind, the benefit you reap leads to holiness, and the results is eternal life. That's very important. Benefits, eternal life. Benefits, eternal life. That's very important. And here's a thought that I want you to keep in mind. Acceptance of the gospel message of Jesus Christ brings a change in lifestyle. I want to say that again. Acceptance of the gospel message of Jesus Christ brings a change in lifestyle. It, it's a crucifixion of man's corrupt nature and a life of holy service to Jesus Christ. 
Now, people love to think about catchphrases. I want to mention a catchphrase that may be somewhat hot today. A catchphrase today is culture of change. Culture of change. Now, often it appears in reference to politics, government, and many other areas of life. Now, change has been described by a writer named Michael Fullen as a usually chaotic process and that it cannot be managed. It can be understood and perhaps, and perhaps led, but not controlled. Now, while culture change may be new for some, change for believers in Christ Jesus is definitely not new. Thank you, Jesus. Perhaps some of you right now who have been born again, thinking about the changes that have taken place in your life. From time to time, from the time of the birth of the church until now, change has been and remains a vital part of the new birth experience. When a sinner turns to Jesus Christ in repentance, he or she is seeking change. When he received the Holy Ghost, the spirit immediately begins a process of change within that individual. His desires begin to change. I want you to start thinking about the changes that have taken place in you. And there are others who I want you to think about the changes that need to take place in yourself. His friends began to change. His behavior began to change. The changes, the changes being brought about by the Holy Spirit in his life do not all happen overnight. Oh, no, they don't. But they are certain to happen. Thank you, Jesus. The church offers the most lasting and revolutionary culture of change possible through the work of the Holy Spirit. Think about that. It's important to be a part of the church that Jesus Christ started, amen, around A.D. 33 in Jerusalem. Now, I want to paint a picture for you in order to help you understand the importance and the magnitude of the change that needs to take place in us in order to enjoy eternal bliss with Jesus Christ. Think about that. I want to paint a picture of the change that really needs to take place in us, that we will one day enjoy eternal bliss have a home with Jesus Christ throughout eternity. Now, I'm told that every year, millions of monarch butterflies fly approximately 2,000 miles from Canada to California and Mexico to enjoy a moist and more suitable climate. Now, in order for those butterflies to make that flight, a change had to first take place in the worm or the caterpillar. Mm -hmm. The caterpillar or that worm had to undergo a complete change. 
I've never seen a caterpillar fly. I've never seen a worm fly. That caterpillar had to undergo unrecognizable changes from his old self. Now, to the same degree, a sinner must change if he or she expects to be caught up and live with God throughout eternity. Thank you, Jesus. Think about that. That's the extent a sinner must change. Unrecognizable. Complete change. Change of heart, change of mind, change of direction. Before the butterfly could take a flight, it had to undergo a long process of development. The struggle breaking from the cocoon was part of the process. And many of us, when God allow us to go through a few little changes, we get all bent out of shape. I'm reminded of a story that I heard. This little child, this person saw this cocoon and he saw the, the butterfly trying to break loose. And he went and thought he was helping the butterfly and he broke the cocoon open. He didn't know that he was doing the butterfly great harm. When the butterfly came out of the cocoon, it couldn't fly. Its wings were not strong enough. But because of the struggle, the struggle, the constant struggle, and by the time that butterfly was able to break out of that cocoon, its wings were strong enough that it could fly like it was designed to. When God allow us to go through some changes, don't you know that God knows what it takes for us to soar? I'm reminded <clears throat> of a scripture in Psalms 119, 71. I believe it was David talking. He said, my suffering was good for me, but it taught me to pay attention to your decrees, to your word, your statutes. My suffering was good for me. It taught me to pay attention to your word. Isn't that awesome? We find in 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 2 through 5, it let us know that if your change has been as complete as that of the butterfly. You won't spend the rest of your lives chasing your own desires, but you will be anxious to do the will of God. Thank you, Jesus. If your changes were as complete and as drastic as that of the butterfly from the caterpillar, you will not be anxious to do bad thing, but you'll be anxious to do the will of God. Thank you, Jesus. You have had enough in the past of the evil thing. That's what the word of God is telling us. Haven't you had enough of that old lifestyle? God is calling for a complete change in your life. Their immorality and their lust, their feasting and drunkenness, and wild parties, and their terrible worship of idols. Verse 4 says, of course, your former friends are surprised when you no longer plunge into the flood of wild, destructive things that they do. If your friends and you are still enjoying the same old nonsense, the same old wild party, the same old drinking, the same old chasing, amen, See who can stay up the longest, you are the night. I wonder, has a real change taken place in your life? Your friends ought to be able to see that there's a change in your life. It may be time to change friends. But remember, 
that they will have to face God. Amen. They will have to stand, amen, in judgment before a righteous God. For God stands ready to judge everybody, both the living and the dead. Your friends may poke fun at you, but let them. They're going to have to meet a righteous God one day. Now, no butterfly can undergo these changes for another. That's important. No butterfly can undergo those drastic changes for another butterfly. It is a personal, grueling experience. Each butterfly must undergo a man if it expects to fly. I'm going somewhere. The transformation from a child of darkness to a child of light must take place on a personal basis. Yes. I don't care how good your friends are to you, how much your mother loves you. You got to make that change and that decision for yourself. Now, there may be hundreds of people who may receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost at the same time doing a church service. But yet each experience is personal and private. No one can repent for another. No one can receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost for another. Each person must take that walk down salvation path for him or herself. Thank you, Jesus. Now, don't be like the people during Noah's day. Perhaps people tried to get in the ark after the door was shut. After the door was shut. When the door of salvation is closed, it will be too late. Today is the day of salvation. Tomorrow just may be too late. Now, concerning Noah and the ark, we find in Genesis chapter 7, around verse 16. I want you to listen to this because it's very, it's very interesting. The Bible tells us that the Lord closed the door behind them. When Noah and his family went in, with all the animals that went in, the Bible said that God, the Lord, closed the door behind them. That's interesting. He didn't say Moses closed it. it is, he said, God closed it. He didn't say Noah closed it. Pardon me. He didn't say Noah closed it, but God closed it. He sealed them in. And at the same time, he sealed out the turbulent waters and the violence of men trying to break in from the onslaught of the flood. He sealed the waters out, sealed them in, and kept the people from breaking in when the flooded waters began to fall. That reminds me of a scripture over in Ephesians chapter 4, around verse 30. You can feel free to turn to it. Ephesians chapter 4, around verse 30. The Bible teaches us, do not bring sorrow to God's Holy Spirit by the way you live. Let me say that again. Do not bring sorrow to God's Holy Spirit by the way you live. You say that you have the gift of the Holy Spirit. Is this how the Holy Spirit behaves? Are these places that the Holy Spirit feel comfortable being? The words that come out of your mouth, is the Holy Spirit okay with those words? 
The things that you do when you think nobody that know you are looking, is the Holy Spirit pleased with that? Living a changed life. I don't care where you, wherever you go, there's always going to be two there with you, except one of them chooses to withdraw himself. You will be there, and God will be there, unless God chooses to withdraw himself. Now, the Bible says, remember, he has identified you as his own. Are you representing Jesus Christ as a child of God? If Jesus were walking right beside you, would he be embarrassed or would he be pleased with the life you live every day? He has identified you as his own. In other words, he has put his seal on you. Thank you, Jesus. Guaranteeing that you will be saved on the day of redemption. Thank you, Jesus. I want to just read <clears throat> quickly a few more verses from Ephesians chapter 4. And I want you to listen at the word of God. Ephesians chapter 4. So let me read a few verses there, starting at verse 17. Listen, listen carefully, because I want the word of God to speak to you. With the Lord's authority, I say this. Live no longer as the Gentiles, those that have not received Christ, for they are hopelessly confused. Their minds are full of darkness. They wander far from the life God gives because they have closed their minds and hardened their hearts against him. They have no sense of shame. That's interesting. Look around yourself. Look around yourself. The circles that you travel in. Shouldn't there be some sort of shame that people, the way that people present themselves? Shouldn't there be some sort of shame because of something that come out of people's mouth? And with you being identified as a child of God, having the seal of God, are you comfortable? Are you comfortable walking and talking and living with that crowd, it may be time to change and get some new friends. Are your friends influencing you, or are you influencing your friends? Verse 20, but that isn't what you learned about Christ. Since you have heard about Jesus and have learned the truth that comes from him. Listen what the Bible says, <clears throat> verse 22. Throw off your old sinful nature and your former way of life, which is corrupted by lust and deception. Instead, let the Spirit renew your thoughts and attitudes. Put on your new nature, living a life of change. That's what God is calling for. Created to be like God and not like your so-called friends. Truly righteous and holy. So stop telling lies. Let us tell our neighbors the truth. For we are all parts of the same body. And don't sin by letting anger control you. Get a hold to yourself. Why are you talking at the top of your lungs, screaming and carrying on? I don't think your 
brother, your sister, your uncle, aunt, niece, or nephew, your husband or wife, your children, your parents. I don't think they're that hard of hearing. Pipe it down a little bit. Don't let the sun go down while you are still angry. For anger gives foothold to the devil. If you let him in the front seat, he want to drive. He want to drive, he want to take over your life. Don't let the devil drive. Don't let him ride. If you are a thief, quit stealing. Instead, use your hands for good, hard work. And then give generously to others in need. And I want to say this. <clears throat> I thank God there are a number of people who are a part of this ministry who have been generous and giving, not so much out of their abundance, but giving out of what they have to others. And I say to you, God bless you, and you will not lose your reward. Thank you, Jesus. Verse 29, don't use foul or abusive language. Let everything you say be good and helpful so that your words will be an encouragement to those who hear them. Thank you, Jesus. Living a changed life. Now, just as the butterfly no longer inch along, think about that. The butterfly doesn't inch along like that little caterpillar, that little worm inching along. The butterfly soars. So just as the butterfly no longer inch along, munching on leaves, but gracefully fly freely, enjoying sweet nectar. Ain't that beautiful? Nor should a born again believer Return to groveling in sin. God's word commands us not to allow sin to reign in our bodies. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And we just read that in our scripture lesson, Romans 6, 11 through 13. Now, the power of transformation or change comes through the work of Jesus Christ and his sacrificial blood. Blood must be shed to cover man's sin. For without the shedding of blood, the Bible says there is no remission of sin. In the Old Testament, animal sacrifices were made. Their, their blood did not have the power to remove sin. Finally, the ultimate sacrifice of blood came with Christ's work on Calvary. Thank you, Jesus. To activate the power of the blood shed by Jesus Christ, we must enter the covenant, the agreement, the promise, a pledge of the new birth. Lord, I thank you. Thank you, Jesus. You know, as stated in a previous Bible class that I taught early on, God is not only interested in us attaining righteous living. God is not only interested in us getting there, but God is also interested in maintaining a righteous lifestyle. We can attain, we can arrive, but God does not want us to fizzle out. He does not want us to turn back, lose faith. He does not want us to faint along the way. But what about maintaining a righteous lifestyle? Right before your friends, right before your family. The blood is not only applied when a person repents of sins 
It is applied at repentance. It is applied when we are baptized in water in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. It is applied when we receive the blessed gift of the Holy Ghost. Jesus did not come just to forgive sin. Let me say that again. Jesus did not come just to forgive sin. He came also to give us power over sin. Lord, I thank you. A changed life does not stop at one's conversion experience. No, it doesn't. Living for God is a lifetime experience and one of growth. This lifetime experience is not dull and full of drudgery, as some would have you to think. Mm -mm. You, will, you can read in 2 Peter chapter 1, 3 through 11, it tells us about all so many good promises that God has for us. You can read it on your own. Read about it. It's not a drudgery life like some would have you to think, but it's full of goodness. Thank you, Jesus. A Christian transformation, a Christian transition from saint to sinner is more than an overnight ordeal. Oh, yes, it is. Instead, it is a lifetime of ongoing changes. We add, we add a little bit more. Spiritual revelation, knowledge, understanding, obedience to divine directives of God. Spiritual concepts for our lives. We are constantly growing. Spiritual growth comes by diligence. No strong Christian got where he or she is by accident. No strong Christian got where he or she is by accident. Each level of development comes through the diligence of prayer, study, and crucifying the flesh with fasting. None of these are easy. Great effort is necessary to grow into a mature Christian. Spiritual growth comes through focus. Unfocused believers go endlessly through the same cycles of decline and revival. Decline and revival. Focused believers, on the other hand, grow because they obtain what they seek. Abraham looked for a city of God. Yes, he did. He set his goal. He marched forward. In the process, he led the way for countless people of God who also would exhibit faith and obtain the promise and favor of God. Lord, I thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Some Christians take the first few steps of repentance, water baptism in Jesus' name, receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, and then fold their arms and choose not to advance any further. This deception keeps a person from realizing all of God's blessings. Such a one who lacks these things is blind and cannot see afar off and had forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. That's what 2 Peter chapter, chapter 1, verse 9 tells us. Once a person forgets where God found him, he or she would tend to resurrect their old sins. Change does not come easy for a lot of us. Usually, change is uncomfortable. Our flesh presents a multitude of diversities, of diversions, to keep us from pursuing the goal of excellence in Christ Jesus. You know, I'm going to close by saying this. But now you're free from the power of sin and have become slaves of God. Now you do these things that lead to holiness and result in eternal life. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. 
through Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. That's part of our scripture lesson. Our attitude, our attitude towards change should not be the attitude of the world that says, oh, whatever. Too many people take a whatever attitude, approach, when God calls them to, to their best. Instead, our attitude should be whatever it takes, spiritual growth, change values, and a God of perfection should be our goal as we accept the challenge by saying whatever it takes. It may take my crying. It may take my trying. It will take my dying to sin just to behold his face. The one who died, bled and suffered and rose the third day. Thank you, Jesus. I say to you, <clears throat> let God know that you are ready to turn from your old habits and ways and accept him as your Lord and Savior. Jesus said, you must be born of water and of the Spirit. We can baptize you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. God stands ready right now to baptize you with the Holy Spirit. Isn't that awesome? Jesus stands ready to save you. If you would like to have further discussion concerning him and your salvation, please feel free to call me at 678-759-8989. I'm believing and trusting that God has left a message with you on this day. May God bless you. Let us pray. Gracious Father, we thank you for your word. Let your word, O oh God, prick somebody's heart. O oh Lord, our God, let someone come closer to you. This we pray and we thank you. In Christ Jesus' name, amen and amen. May God bless you all.